Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the third section of our logic chapter on a connective called the conditional. Up to this point, we've seen other connectives like and, or, and the negation. And each of them had their own rule for when they're true or false. And we're gonna have to learn how this connective is true or false as well. A conditional statement is a compound statement that uses the connective if then. The conditional is written with an arrow, so if you want to write if p then q in symbols, you write p arrow q with the arrow pointing toward the q. There are a lot of different ways to read this. The two most common are p implies q or if p then q. Either way, the p, the part that comes before the arrow, is called the antecedent, with ante meaning before while q, the part that follows the arrow, is called the consequent. Now let's talk about how we might understand when a conditional statement would be true and when it would be false. To help us, we're going to think about the statement, if you, if you score 100% on all homework assignments, then you will receive bonus points. This statement makes a promise. And what we're going to think about is all the different possible scenarios in which the different components are true and false, and whether the statement was true, the promise was kept, or the statement turned out to be false, the promise was broken. Scenario one, you complete all of your homework and you receive the bonus points. So the question is, did I tell you the truth when I said, if you score 100% on all your homework assignments, then you will receive the bonus points? It looks that way, right? You did all of it, you got 100%, and you did receive the bonus point, so the promise was kept and the statement is true. Now consider scenario two. You complete all of your homework, but you don't receive the bonus points. You're probably upset, right? This, state, this would mean that the original statement was false because the promise was broken. Scenario three, though, confuses people, so really you have to stop and think about this one. You do not complete all of your homework, but you receive the bonus points anyway. So, did I lie or did I tell the truth? Well, you might be surprised to know that in fact I was telling the truth. The promise was kept in the sense that I never said what would happen if you didn't get 100% on all your homework assignments. I only said what would happen if you did. Scenario four, you do not complete all of your homework and you do not receive the bonus points. Well, once again, I never said what would happen if you didn't complete all of your homework. So this is a true statement as well. Observe that the only time the statement turned out to be false was when the antecedent was true, you completed all your homework, but the consequent, the part following then, you will receive bonus points, never happened, turned out to be false. In other words, if we were to make a truth table for the conditional, the only time that we would have a false statement is if the antecedent were true, but the consequent were false. All the other scenarios would be true. With that in mind, let's take a look at this example. We're going to determine whether each component statement is true or false, and then determine if the overall compound statement is true or false. Component statements refers to the statements that are between the connectives, if then. In the first statement, part A, that says, if the teacher's name is Ms. Hearn, then Ms. Hearn is a math instructor, the antecedent is the component immediately following if. It's the component, the teacher's name is Ms. Hearn. The consequent is the component statement following the word then. Ms. Hearn is a math instructor. Since I'm the teacher and my name is Ms. Hearn and I'm a math instructor, both the antecedent and the consequent are true. This also means that the promise was made and kept. So this overall compound statement is also true. Now let's look at part B. The antecedent is the teacher's name is Ms. Hearn, which is true. The consequent is that Ms. Hearn is not a math instructor, which is false. 
Whenever we have true implies false, I like to think of it as the promise was made and then broken, which means the overall compound statement is false. In part C, the antecedent is the teacher's name is Bruce Wayne, which is false. The consequent is Miss Hearn is a math instructor, which is true. Whenever you have false implies true, it's like the promise was never made. So it doesn't matter if the consequent is true or false, we still get a true statement. Remember, the only time we get a false is when we have true implies false, not the other way around. The order matters when we're talking about the conditional. In part D, the antecedent is the teacher's name is Bruce Wayne, which is false. So really, it doesn't matter what the truth value of the consequent is. We know the overall statement is going to be true. But since we were told to find the truth value of each component, let's go ahead and find the truth value of the consequent. Miss Hearn is not a math instructor is false. So even false implies false is true. And that strikes a lot of people as kind of strange because you know in, with an and statement, if both components are false, it's definitely false. With an or statement, also two falses makes a false. But with the conditional, false implies false is actually true. P implies Q is only false when P is true, but Q is false. Also, if the antecedent is false, then P implies Q is always true. And if the consequent is true, then P implies Q is always true as well. Give this a try. Decide whether each statement is true or false. T will represent a true component statement and F a false component statement. Go ahead and pause the video, write down what you think your answers are, and then restart the video to see the answers. In part A, we don't know what the antecedent is, but we know that it's true. We know the consequent is 4 is less than 2, which is a false statement. So we have true implies false. The promise is made and then broken, so this compound statement is false. In part B, the antecedent is 8 equals 1, which is false. The consequent, we don't know what it is, but it's false as well. False implies false must be true because the only time that a conditional is false is when you have true implies false. Now let's apply our knowledge of the conditional to a different topic, which is tautologies. A statement that is always true no matter what the truth values of the components is called a, tauto a tautology. They may be checked by forming truth tables. We're going to check if this statement is a tautology. P implies Q implies negation P or Q. We'll use a truth table to demonstrate it by determining if the final column of the truth table is all trues. If so, we have a tautology. Otherwise, we don't. To fill in the truth values, we'll need to use four rules that we've learned so far for connectives. One is the negation that always gives you the opposite truth value. The next is the AND, the conjunction, which is only true if true and true. Next is OR, the disjunction, which is only false if both components are false. And the next is the IF THEN, the conditional, which is only false when you have true implies false. Looking at the statement that we're about to analyze, we know that it has two components, P and Q which means there's going to be two columns, one for P and one for Q, and then there's going to be a column for each of the connectives. One, two, three, four symbols here for connectives, so we're going to have six columns all together. The first two are P and Q, then we have the first set of parentheses, P implies Q, then we have negation of P, then we have the whole second set of parentheses, negation P or Q, and then finally we have the whole statement. There are four possible scenarios when we have two components, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Next we're going to analyze P implies Q. 
Remember, P implies Q is only false when P is true, but Q is false. We're going to use columns one and two and identify that that only happens in the second row. That means that P implies Q is false in the second scenario, but true in the others. Next, we'll analyze the negation of P. To do this, we're going to take the opposite of all the truth values of P, which was in the first column. So we're gonna use column one. That's going to give us false, false, true, true. Next, we're gonna analyze the or connective here. So we're going to use the rule that an or is only false if both components are false. But the two components that we're going to look at are negation of P and Q. So we're going to need to use columns four and two. And we're looking for anywhere that columns four and two are both false, which only happens in the second scenario. So that's the only time that this disjunction is going to be false, and in all other cases, it's going to be true. Finally, we're going to analyze the conditional that joins P implies Q to not P or Q, which means that we're going to need to use columns three and five, and we're looking for where column three has a true and column five has a false, which is the only time that this conditional will be false. In the first row, column three is true, but so is column five. In the second row, column three is false, so that's not what we're looking for already. In the third row, we have true and then true, and in the fourth row, we have true and then true. We never have a situation where we have true implies false which means that each one of these scenarios results in a true statement. Since every single scenario results in a true statement, we have a tautology. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. The next video will be on the conditional continued.